Now this is my 1949 Studebaker 2R5 half ton pickup truck that me and my sister are in the process of restoring. And today I just want to talk about the basic wiring needed to get this motor started and it boils down to two areas really. I had to replicate the ignition switch which I will show you in a second how I did that and then the second thing is being able to establish a starter button that will allow me to engage the starter to turn the motor to get it started. I also took the time to go ahead and set up a grounding strap to ground the motor to the frame and then I have a temporary fuel system to provide fuel for this. And we'll talk about each one of those here in just a second. I wanted to set up the engine so that I could start the motor even as I was having the, the body work done on the cab and fenders and stuff like that. In order to do that, I needed to set up a starter switch and then I also needed to set up an ignition switch so that I could get power to my coil to fire up the the spark plugs. I just took basically a 12 inch wide by about 18 inch long 3 8 inch piece of plywood and I mounted it to the side of my chassis there. In fact down here at the bottom, way down at the bottom here, the two bolt holes down there, those are actually mounted through the holes where the steering gear box goes. I added another bracket here and this bracket is actually holding my key which is I'm using as a toggle switch. And then you can see where I mounted the starter button right here. This is the one that goes on the floor when you push in the clutch, you can engage this, and that's what engages the starter. Uh, this is, again, my battery. It's a positive ground system. And so, if you just look over here, you can see the positive terminal with the ground strap to the engine right there. And then, here's my negative terminal, and you can see the cable going down here, and I'll show you the back side of this with the wiring. This is the hot wire that will go to the toggle switch and then when I flip the toggle switch up it will provide power to the, the coil so that I can have fire going through the spark plugs. Well, this is the back side. Here's my hot wire. I've got it connected to the negative terminal here. It comes to my toggle switch here. And then down in the bottom this wire here is actually which goes to my coil. This is the wire that goes from the toggle switch down here to the coil and distributor right here. And if you look in the wiring diagram, you'll have the wire that comes out that goes to your ignition switch. And so that's what I've done. I've just hooked into it so that I can get power to my coil and distributor there. This battery wire here, it's a one gauge I got from Tractor Supply. It bolts on right here. And then this one gauge wire goes from here to the starter on the other side. And so this is the starter switch. You push it in, sends power through to engage the starter. Okay, that one gauge wire that started from the other side, it comes up underneath the engine, comes over here and it mounts to the starter right here. This ground cable here. This ground cable is a four gauge wire. It's a switch to switch wire, 31 inches long. Bought it at O'Reilly's. Uh, but what I did was, is I went ahead and removed the old bolt here, put in a two and a half inch grade eight bolt. I bolted the starter and the bell housing back together and then added this ground cable on the end of this and tied it off there. And so then I took that line and ran it down and along the frame. And when I got up to the motor mount here on the passenger side, uh, that's where I bolted it down to the frame right there. So that gives me a grounding strap from the frame to the engine. So I'll back out of there and let you take a look at that. So you can see the grounding strap here goes down to the frame and ends up mounting over here. I set up a temporary fuel system by attaching this rubber fuel hose to my fuel pump here, running it down to the fuel tank, which is a two and a half gallon plastic tank. And then with the engine working and the pump working, it should be able to pull the fuel up from there and then feed it up into the carburetor here. I decided to just go ahead and take my oil gauge and mount it straight to my line that comes out of the motor here. 
Uh, generally, you would have your oil line running from here to your oil gauge on the dash. But I removed, separated the oil gauge from my dash and it mounted right up to this line right here. So I decided just to go ahead and put it right there so that I could see my oil pressure as the motor was running. Okay, we'll flip the switch, start it. Starting to pop it in there, so okay. it's, it's catching the gas up in there now. So, you shut this off? Is yeah, go ahead and shut that off again. <laughs> Pour a little bit more of this into there. Okay, go ahead and flip her on and start it up. Okay, again. Switch it off. Okay, switch off. Success! Didn't that take that awesome. long, did it? Once we got the fuel going. That is awesome. So that's kind of how it works. I just got the wiring. The, the toggle switch represents the key. I got it running from the battery through here down to the coil. And then we got the starter button uh, that hooks the battery the, to the battery, from the battery over here to the starter. So that's our first attempt at starting our baby right there today. We got her done. Oh.